Hello and welcome to the Costex Coffee Break webinar series. My name is Adman. I'm a product specialist with Exactol, and this month we'll be looking at rate libraries. Um, I've named it part one. This is because this will be a two-part series. Um, rate libraries are is quite a vast topic, so we'll explore it um, systematically, starting off quite basic and then getting more complex as we go along. If you are new to Costex, um, what we are or what we do as a product um, is a digital estimating software with a universal application ranging from support to hand-drawn sketches, PDFs, 2Ds, um, 3Ds and fully compatible BIM models. Um, chronologically, as you think of a project, essentially how the software also works is from those bring those drawings into the software, taking your on-screen measurements on whatever format, live linking those measurements to your workbook or a bill of quantities or an estimate, um, and then incorporating revision capability on that as well as BIM data extraction um, that's fully compatible with the software as well or integrated into the software rather. Uh, last month webinar was done by Jonathan. He did a great job on one of our new features uh, called importing uh, Excel workbook or importing an Excel bill of quantities into a Costex workbook. Uh, it's a new feature uh, that has recently released with an update to the software and it just explores the different importing options. So depending on the Excel, obviously, whether you want to base that import on the formatting of it, or if you want to add a control column to your Excel to make the import a bit more seamless, um, or if you've got multiple tabs in an Excel that we very often see, um, or then using a combination of all of the above. Uh, you can view this webinar and all of our other webinars on our website or on our YouTube channel. This month um, we'll be looking at the rate libraries as I've, as I've mentioned. Um, the basics of the rate libraries is really to create a rate library, um, what does default rate libraries look like, how to create both flat and composite rates, then importing and exporting from and to a CSV file and how to edit it and bring it back in and then actually utilizing these rates in your workbooks for costing. Okay, um, so inside of Costex, uh, what we will start to do, you can see here we've got a partially priced bill, um, which we will get to in a second. This is inside of our workbook or bill of quantities. Um, and we are utilizing rate libraries over here. So where you find your ra rate libraries in your workbook is on the left hand side where you would normally have your dimension groups uh, where you get all your quantities from. You've got a rate tab and here is your existing rate libraries. Okay, so to go and add a rate library what we do, we go to our Costex button, System Administration, Costing, and select the rates on the left hand side. So you'll see there's our new rate or our existing ones. Okay, on the right hand side, here we've got the option to insert new ones or to import, and we can import from a CSV, which is essentially a Excel spreadsheet that we've formatted according to the columns that we require, which we will again get to a little bit later, or if you've got a BCIS schedule of rates um, or builds of price list, those can also be imported. So just briefly to look at what it actually looks like to create one from scratch, uh, we can click on the insert button here at the top and you'll see that we've got all of these properties that we can now add. So for the first one, um, let's just give this a name, uh, call it our webinar rates. Okay, you can add a code to your rate library if you so please. I was just checking, I don't think mine even has codes. Yep, I don't have codes. But obviously you can now start thinking about these rates. Very often they might be time-based, so maybe if you want to add a time or a year 
like a date stamp in the code that's maybe something you could do or you can add that in the notes okay now to start putting items in here you'll see here's all the details of those items again you've got a code uh, a description these descriptions can vary um, it can even be a full description you'll again see later on how we utilize can utilize these descriptions in our workbooks as well um, you'll put it in a group uh, just that for the sake of organizing it and then you'll give the rate and the unit of measurement okay so to add an item inside of the rate library we click the insert button again inside of here the one at the bottom the one at the top will create this rate library okay so just say yes and now we've got the new item so let's say our first item is just a concrete item oops and just call it con location so rate libraries are also location specific so for this exercise we just keep it as a default location okay um, our description um, can be as brief or as elaborate as you want it to be uh, for my example that I'm using now it will be very basic so I'll just say 20 MPA concrete okay and I won't put it in a group for this one unit of measurement so meters cubed and our rate in this case let's say it's 400 per cube big meter we insert that and there's our item created okay I'll add another group or another item just as a flat rate um, call this uh, Rio steel uh, for reinforcement Still, unit of measurement kgs and a rate of four dollars per kilogram click insert and there we have basic two flat rates as we call them okay now further to this um, we can also actually create a composite rate so what that would look like is now you can have your basic material rates and then for a composite rate we can create another one call this for instance uh, strip footing code first foundation strip and description of strip footing 600 by 300 this will be per meter and now instead of hard typing out a rate I can actually create what we call a rate build up okay um, now that we've created these flat rates as we call it that's the simplest way so if you're building it from let's call it first principles that would be the basic way to just add those rates one by one as I mentioned there's obviously a way to import rates so it might be way easier to actually edit a Excel spreadsheet that follows a similar pattern to this uh, we'll look into those Excel spreadsheets um, a little bit later on um, but it would essentially have exactly this layout so item code uh, description a group if you want to put it in folders like you'll see in a second um, the rate and then the unit of measurement as well um, so then we can just click update and that webinar rate rate library will be created um, here's again that input um, function on the right so if I close out of this you can see that now on the left hand side these rates uh, or this rate library has been added um, it doesn't have a folders uh, but there are those two items that I can then refer to so now we'll explore a bit more about copying rates editing rates and creating different rate buildups as well and then 
how do I utilize those rates into my bill of quantities um, and how does that then translate to a priced item in the workbook okay so the first thing to do is you'll see on your workbook if you look at your workbook properties your workbook will be linked to a default rate library okay um, all the rate libraries are available um, obviously this would now need to have a consistency between or you'll need to ensure the consistency between your workbooks um, and your rate libraries so you'll see that I've got the project project rates library selected um, I don't need to update that it was already linked correctly and for these rates um, because you are now familiar with that layout um, I'll access the rate library from this side so if I drill into the detail of my concrete trade you'll see I've got that same strip foundation here already okay so that strip foundation to go on or oh, I've got a strip foundation here um, to go on as an example um, it, this has already been measured um, there's a center line that's been measured and this strip foundation is 600 by 200 millimeters um, in size and it's reinforced already as well so there'll obviously be an allowance for that okay so now in the rate column uh, I can access my rate library let me go and show you what this rate library looks like in system admin just a brief overview so if I again navigate to my rates I can see that here's some flat rates as we as I call them earlier but you'll see that these are also grouped a bit better so I can easily filter through this and work through this to get familiar with um, these rates and it would be way easier to navigate through this when I expand the folder on this side so there's that strip footing um, and you'll see that there's a rate attached to that item as well if I click the edit button in this case we now have a build up rate which refers to a whole host of different flat rates that we've imported originally okay so let me cancel out of this and show you how we use this in the workbook so I'll close out of here and out of my system administration expand my project rates and go and look for that strip foundation which I find in that folder for substructure okay now the easiest way is just to drag this across into the column for rates and this is where I told you that the description could be used at a later stage so if I choose to override this description that I have over here I can click to use my description as well okay at the moment let's just I'll be happy with the rate I can click to update that I've got a rounding option as well as well as a live link so if I click to update that we'll see that it appears in green now in Costex green means live green means live link so with that in mind I can click on the show source button and it will bring up that same window to show me what the source of this is showing me which rate library I'm referring to what item I'm referring to again accessing the breakdown or the assembly in here now how we create these assemblies um, is actually in the workbook so I'm going to delete that rate um, by just clicking the delete button and I'll do that again but this time I'm holding down my alt key so what the alt will do is it will expand that rate so instead of pasting the rate it will actually paste the full assembly or the rate build up so now I can access this assembly and actually see what is inside this assembly okay and what it comprises of so first of all first of all I know that this is 600 by 200 so I can then make any adjustments to this existing assembly that I have okay I also know that my layout in this workbook is trade related not elemental um, so I need to make a, a few small adjustments my excavation is separate so all of my excavation items for instance I would 
take out of here um, by just selecting those I don't even have to, and just deleting those rows and you'll see that the adjustments are being made as we go along okay so just to walk you through what we've done here uh, we've defined the dimensions then we've calculated the rebar okay by just using basic assumptions for the size um, we've got the factors for these size rebars that's actually also found in our constant tables um, so for our round bars sorry we actually have the 16 moles and the 12 mole items over here so there's 0 0.887 0 0.888 and for the 16 mole 1.58 1 1.578 so um, just the rounding obviously affecting that a little but that's the calculation for our rebar and our calculation for our concrete um, is based on cell C2 and C3 which are these items over here so we are calculating it per meter uh, okay and then just running through the rest of it um, so as I said we are calculating this rate as a rate per meter so just going down um, we can confirm all of these items so I've got a blinding in there and again these items are from the flat rates that we have in the bowl um, so we can see that all of these are obviously calculating based on these items so that's a concrete so there's that 20 dirhams and that has obviously just been dragged into here as we have done previously um, just using that rate okay um, once we are happy with this we can then drill back up and I've actually just realized that that rate over there reflects a rate per meter as we've just run through it so this is actually not a meters cubed but rather a meter and then just to check this quantity as well this would rather be a meter quantity which is the length that was measured um, so going back up that reflects a more of a true reflection of what it should be um, so there's that new rate now after editing rate like that um, we can then go as well and actually save this um, new rate so by right right clicking on the rate that we just created we can actually copy that rate to our rate library um, and again just follow the same schedule same headings so we give it a new item code um, in this case just a strip footing again um, so item code let me see what the existing one is so that we follow a certain just have a little bit of consistency going so copy that to the rate library and we call it again strip footing no harm in that put it in that same substructure and click to insert that rate and there's that new rate added as well okay so the adjusted rate that we made so yeah that's the, the basics and how we will get started with the rate libraries um, those as you saw if I actually go back in here we can also start coding these up and what this helps with at a later stage um, what I'll show in the next video as well is when we actually start reshuffling um, our bulls we can expand this Costex can drill into this detail and pull this information up to different levels so if you want to see your rates broken down as for instance in a resource analysis or like this into different trades um, it's quite easy to extract so I hope you can start to understand and start to see the benefit um, of these rate libraries um, and because 
well, one last thing on these rates as well, um, and on the rate libraries, is because our rates are very often time linked as well, um, not often, they are time linked to a time as well, uh, we also have a markup feature, um, which when utilized will actually apply a markup across all of your rates um, that you've used. So by literally just clicking markup rates, you can just add a percentage of markup. So whether that be for a contingency or an escalation, um, that's up to you. And whether it be 5% or 10%, you can just type that up and it will apply that factor across all of your rates. Okay. Um, if you saw when I went up to the markup function, just below that there is an exclude quantity um, option. Oh, sorry, on the drop down, there's an exclude option from the markup. So if you have any items that you is not susceptible to this markup that you want to apply, um, you can exclude them on an item for item basis. Um, so that's the m and while I was touching on that topic of uh, markup and benchmarking and um, escalation, uh, we actually have a new tool as well released. Uh, we call it Costex Benchmark. Um, it's an online tool that's hosted on the cloud and it's actually a proper benchmark tool. Um, so do check that out as well. Um, it was actually also covered uh, two or three videos ago. So have a look at that. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope it has been a little helpful already um, and please do join us next month as we explore this topic even further. Um, but in conclusion for this month what we've learned is that rate libraries essentially is the essence of estimating. Um, it's really simple to actually create these rate libraries or to import them. Um, the real power is that this is now shared information um, and if this rate library is well maintained, well maintained um, then it obviously brings massive collaboration benefits to the table and the fact that these rates can actually comprise of these different assemblies and composite rates um, makes it not only a bulk of data but actually real relevant information um, that you can use to extract all different types of information and this is part of touching on what we will be looking at next month. Um, if you've got any questions with regards to this please do reach out to us we are always willing and ready to help you. Um, you can contact us on our emails or on calls we have regional numbers for um, all of our offices and for all of our regions. Um, see you again soon. Cheers.